Um, the prisoner's dilemma, in my mind, uh, you know, relates um, more broadly to these many situations in life. At a human level, but at an organizational level, I think it is seen, where um, uh, collectively a set of parties, companies, you know, non-governmental organizations, people um, uh, have uh, a certain outcome that they'd all like to, to be able to achieve, that they all share some some value, some desired outcome. Um, but, um, but where at an individual level, they are, they are concerned that under doing the right thing will expose them to adverse behavior, to um, unfavorable behavior on the part of another, um, of one of the other parties. Um, and, and this leads to this perverse outcome where they would all benefit from um, from from a common outcome um, that has them doing the right thing. They'd all love that as they'd all prefer that as the outcome. But because they're scared of being betrayed, being made the fool, being you know uh, put at disadvantage. Um, uh, by their vulnerability, by trying to do the right thing, that they end up not doing the right thing, and that leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy where you know no, very few people or or the organizations do the right thing. So it it leads to this you know ironic situation where um, there's this there's this seemingly um, uh, horrendous difference between what the aspirations are on the one hand collectively um, and what often is said verbally about what's desired and what actually comes about. And, you know, I think it occurs uh, politically. I think it occurs in terms of uh, competition for NGOs, for grant and funding resources and so on. I think it occurs uh, among companies in terms of environmental or social responsibility, et cetera. I think it occurs at an individual level in terms of, um, you know, uh, everything from, from what's that? Uh, cognition? cognition. Um, yeah, I mean, in the context of cognition, maybe, maybe I, I'd have to unpack that, but it occurs, you know, all the time with respect to, um, situations where the parties are feeling vulnerable maybe it's in a it's in a you know a partnership a relationship maybe it's in the context of uh, competition for promotions or or work resources or whatever but um you know if only there were trust between them they could achieve something much greater but because there's not that trust they end up falling short and achieve uh, far less uh, because they're each, you know, sort of narrowly preferring their own to, to, to protect themselves against adverse outcomes. And it leads to a, a much worse outcome for the group as a whole. That, that's what I really think of the hallmarks of these situations. And they are legion. They're all around us, um, prisoners' dilemma situations. And, you know, I think one of the things that regulators or those who set rules try to do is recognize these situations and set a, a set of rules that establish a playing field where they all have to um, you know, adhere to um, the more favorable behavior that they want to in the first place and don't have to worry about, about the other betraying them. And, and I think, you know, again, this goes on um, uh, at the climate level, you know, think emissions for cars and, and car companies, but it also goes on, um, you know, at the level of, um, of, of social responsibility and, and sort of, um, you know, obligations. And this is one of the, um, I think the roles that regulators can play is trying to set an environment where 
those aspirations can be realized, you know, to um, th that they're all hoping for the right thing and to be shielded from others doing the wrong thing. That's where a general regulatory framework may be helpful to prevent others from taking advantage of their vulnerability, you know, um, and, uh, and it allows each to maybe um, accord with what they want to do, but would otherwise feel too vulnerable to to do to do the right thing. I, I think that is that's a a real prospect that could be undertaken, and you know, it, it, for regulations like that. And I speak regulations in a very broad sense can be put in place in many areas of life. You know, to to set that level playing field and set that um, uh, set that safe environment for functioning whereby um, those vulnerabilities don't derail something that everyone agrees best. You know, I see these things all the time around us. Um, and again, I think in politics, well, we see the consequences in politics where, yeah, the behavior of governments and political parties and, um, you know, uh, each, each jockeying to put others at a disadvantage when, when sometimes, you know, all would be better off with less vitriol and less, um, less, uh, uh, you know, stirring up less anger um, uh, on the part of the populace, but they, they want to do it to, to, to put the other at disadvantage and avoid being taken advantage of themselves to, to win. Uh, yeah, I think, I think these situations are all around us at many different levels. So um, I think organizationally, it occurs in a big way. Yeah, anyway, those are my comments.